All right, so here I have an ice box service call today. The uh, the compressor is not kicking on, so I I found the defrost timer. It was about to go into defrost. Right now it's in defrost uh, purely, so I don't have to unplug the box. Anyways, it's in uh, defrost. Uh, this thing's gonna pop out of defrost in about 15 minutes. Long story short, the compressor is not starting. The evap fans are spinning inside uh, when it's in freeze mode. So all I've done so far is to pop out this capacitor and I'm gonna check the starting component because uh, the condenser fan was running, compressor's not running at all. Didn't even try to start up. Uh, no amps or anything. So this sits into this clip just like that and you pop it open with the flathead screwdriver and then uh, you can pop open this cap with the flathead and then you put your meter on microfarads sometimes these read above 200 so you'll get open line so sometimes you can't use your meter but typically if they're worn out they're like at 168 or one in the 150 under 200 where you can read it this thing's got no juice so I'm gonna flip these just to verify wiggle them around I got no juice in there so this safety right here is it's still intact um, so it didn't explode nothing obvious but there's no microfarads in there what I'm doing is instead of taking out this relay that relay kit the OEM relay I'm just going to uh, I'm going to use the juice out of this one keep the relay over there and then just plug this into these two terminal wires those two female spade connectors so all I'm doing is popping this open with the screwdriver and I'm going to utilize the, uh, this is the overload. So it's basically acts as the comp compressor overload. Um, so I'm set my phone down. Pop it over with the flathead. Disconnect everything and uh, comes out into a replacement capacitor. So the microfarads on this one is above, on the website, it's above like, it's like 240 or something. Um, there it is, I wrote it down on here. 243 to 290 microfarads. Because my meter uh, only goes up to 200, you won't, you won't get a reading on it, unless it's bad. So, just to show you that. So it climbs up to 200 and then it goes to open line. Disconnect. I'm going to do it again. Climbs up to 200, open line. So this capacitor is good. I've got a visitor. So I'm going to plug this into here. And then uh, take it out of defrost and see if it starts up. Okay, so I have my meter on amps. I have it on the power wire, which goes to the timer. And then I have the uh, the compressor set in the old place. It's not, uh, it's a little shoddy, but uh, anyways, it's gonna sit there, it ain't gonna move. The box has a cap, goes over it. And I also put the, uh, old cap from the capacitor on here so it can kind of block itself I'll probably put a zip tie just to hold it in place but this thing ain't going nowhere uh, here's the bad one and the uh, unused components so I'm gonna turn it to out of freeze a quarter turn right out of freeze 
This thing has 10 clicks in defrost. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, so I'm going to click it, see the startup amp, see if the compressor starts up. So it did not start up. Regardless, it still needed a capacitor, so I'm going to just leave that one in there. There's probably a burn wire in the, in the starting area. So, put it back in defrost and I'm going to start taking apart the uh, relay area. Get that taken apart. Alright, so this is still in a defrost. I gotta work quickly. Um, this is upside down. So basically, this is the uh, the relay overload that came with um, the three-in-one hard start. I'm gonna place it and tuck it in as close to the compressor as I could, right there. And basically, you're just taking power from this white one, and it's cutting power to this one which goes to the common so this was a black wire and all I'm doing is utilizing the wire from the uh, from the hard start the three in one just like this oh there goes that forever and uh, it's got a female connector at the end and this type of connector that slides onto the terminal pin on the other end so it's perfect I didn't have to cut any wires so I'm just using the overload, a wire, and the microfarads of the capacitor. So I got my common, my start run, all connected. I don't want any of this touching. And I gotta be careful because the timer can click out at any time. There, so it's one on this side, one on this side. Those wires are gonna keep it into place. It's up against the compressor. Um, all right. So that's it. We replaced the overload and the capacitor, which was much needed. Let's go ahead and get off the box. In case we explode, let's check out the startup amps while we put this in freeze. Tripped instantly. Okay. So this overload blew up for a reason. I'm assuming this compressor start windings are bad, and they're just uh, compressors locking up, I'm burning out this. Burned it out for a reason but it just definitely tripped right now. So. Okay, so I didn't reset the breaker. I just pulled off all the terminals and I got my meter on uh, continuity. I got one lead on the ground and uh, I should have checked this from the beginning. So this compressor is grounded. Uh, I need a new compressor. That's why it tripped. It burned up the overload. It took out the capacitor, burned up the overload. Then it tripped the breaker. And the windings are bad. So I need a new compressor.